Ready? Yep. Okay. So, let's welcome Stray Taoist, who will speak to us about open source deep sky images with Perl. Thank you. Um, I've just sat in a room upstairs listening to people talking about geocoding, three different talks. That's just very parochial. I'm a bit further out. I, earthbound, you've no imagination. Okay, ever since I was a child, um, I don't know whether, given we're in Eastern Europe, how many people pick up my accent, I'm Irish. Um, Ireland doesn't do electricity too well, so we have, it's really dark. So ever since I was a child, I've been looking at the sky. I've, my mother bought me my first telescope when I was about seven or eight. Given there's a lack of electricity, um, work or sense in Ireland, I left England. And I live in Cambridge, which has also has the benefit of not being quite as dark as Ireland, but it's still pretty dark. So in one of my previous lives, I was a stellar astrophysicist. That goes down well at parties. And I used to look at the sky with Fortran and assembly, of all things. Um, then something happened, sex, drugs, rock and roll, pearl. And I never did anything else since then, really. So they, those sort of days are gone. OK, so this picture here I took from my back garden on a 10-year-old DSLR. Am I still on? Yeah, OK. On a 10-year-old DSLR, which is still in my bag and I carry about with me everywhere, on a tripod, um, given where it is probably about last, earlier this year, given the conjunction there. And I, you know, I, I love that. That's, that's fantastic. I can do this from my back garden. But, you know, it's still, you look at all the images that you see. Everybody's seen all the images online. You go, ooh, look at that deep sky stuff. That's awesome. I could never do that at home. It's, that's very expensive. Even decent amateur CCD cameras for telescopes. I'm in Bulgaria, so I did this earlier on. The one that I have costs about 7,000 lev. For a telescope to go into that costs another 6,000 lev. So it's not a cheap hobby to do, which is why we end up looking at all these images online. So, yeah. So anyway, you know, yeah, blah, whatever. So again, we look at all the pictures from Hubble. You know, every, everybody's seen the pictures from Hubble and various different space telescopes round and about, and you know, it's all good. Everybody loves it. I, I define anybody to stop it. But you know, you're never going to get that at home. I don't have X billion dollars to put a satellite into Earth. So yeah, you sit there at home and you just look at all these pictures online. You go, oh, isn't that lovely? That's nice. I mean, and I look at these pictures and every so often I think, you know, I should really go back and work on this stuff. But my wife's not really wanting to move to Chile anymore. So it's been a, whenever my kids have left home, I probably will. You know, so it's all, you know, all really nice. Everybody does this. Everybody. I, I, has anybody not looked at any astronomical pictures online ever? Good. And they, they're all great, aren't they? I mean, as a slight aside, the reason you only see one or two from Hubble at a time is it takes an awful long time to process things. The data is very, very big. But you know, there must be, there must be a better way of doing this, and obviously there is, because I'm not telling you. So I've all these pictures, and I'll go, we see, ah, hold on. The last four or five pictures that you've seen were not from any online space telescope. Those pictures were all generated on my laptop from my sofa. And none of them from Hubble, nice little picture of Hubble. None of them came from Hubble. None of them came from that, my telescope. None of them came from that either. And these days, there's a third way you can do it. Actually, I don't know if anybody's played with it, but you can get there's online telescopes. You sign a subscription, you pay it per month, these, and you can remote web control telescopes that are in places that don't cloud over every single night, which is just handy. But all you're doing there is you get an image back and you process it yourself. So I thought, surely there has to be a better way of doing this. Living in Cambridge, um, I have access to all sorts of people and things. And somebody mentioned to me, did you know that NASA give all their data from all the space telescopes for free. You can download it, play with it, and do whatever you want. And I went, no, that's not true. And he said, yes, it is. But be warned, the people that designed this system are also astrophysicists like me. So you can interface like this, which is awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> anybody that's Web 2.0, just go home. I love this, because this, this, this works really well for me. So what do you do? Yeah, look, you've got all the different, these are all satellites, um, S, um, D, S, Sloan Digital Sky Satellite, all sorts of stuff. Radio, infrared, gamma ones, all very good, okay? So this is, this is online, and I thought, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try and out Hubble Hubble. So I, the, my favorite one is the SDSS and the SSS, DSS, the Digital Sky Survey. So you have to know what you're doing. Coordinates, 
again, this isn't latitude and longitude like your geocoding stuff. I'll come on to what it is in a minute. Plug in your coordinates. Where you go, there's a submit button down here, and it is proper old school CGI submit. It's all good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it is. It all runs. <laughs> I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you about that in a minute, because I have had conversations with them about this. So you do this, you click submit, and what happens is you get a little preview here. This is my little preview panel, and you can download, there's it over there, you can download the FITS file, Flexible Image Transport System. All the professional astronomers use FITS. I'm sure other graphical people use FITS as well, I don't know. It's a, I'm trying not to swear, it's awkward to work with shall we say. And they're huge. They're not compressed. A full, the full image you can get from the space satellites are 6,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels. One of those images is about 200 meg, give or take. So uh, I've discovered this. I've downloaded this huge image, and oh, this is really good fun. I'm not a graphical person. What I do this? I can't put it into GIMP. Another aside, if you're doing any of this sort of stuff, don't use GIMP. Oh, man, seriously, it really is awful. Anyway, so there's a, the professionals whoop, use this here again. This was designed by the um, European Space Authority, so it's not quite as basic as the NASA one. <laughs> but but um, this is called FITS Liberator, and it loads up your file, and um, you can get all sorts of apply different type of logarithmic functions to your... I don't even know what image I've downloaded. Oh, I don't know, Ada Karina, probably. But again, use this the way that I use Photoshop. Uh, just click Convert, please, leave me alone. <laughs> Give me something I can deal with. So and then I, out of that, I can get a nice little PNG file. And so, so what I've done now is somebody's mentioned to me, and this is going to sound terrible, it was in the pub. While I was sitting in the pub and Stephen Hawkins was over there, but um, we've had, Stephen Hawkins and I have had several arguments, but that's a different matter. And if you drive too fast down the streets, bump you over. That's, I'm not joking either. So yeah, so I'm doing all this by hand, and I'm, then it suddenly strikes me. I've been doing Pro for a long time. Why am I doing any of this by hand? So I'll tell you what I'll do, right? I'll, I'll write a little script that'll script their site, get me the image, and download it for me. So now what I have is great. I've got a nice little script, and I'll put in the coordinates. It'll go and grab the file, get it, bring it back, download it for me. Yay, this is all good. But then I still have to load it into Fitz Liberator, export it from Fitz Liberator into something else. And you have to remember as well that these, um, these are technical images. So you have to convert them from monochrome to LRGB. And then from LRGB, you have to flatten them all together, colorize them in different ways. So I was taking, it was taking me a good hour or two to produce one image. I reduced some of that time by going on to there's a thing called the Astrophysical Code Resource Repository. It's sort of Matt's script archive for physicists. Uh, and I have told them I will rewrite some of their stuff, and they're holding me to it, unfortunately. I should, never should have said that. It's all in Python, and it's all really horrible. But on the plus side, because physicists tend to think in a certain way, the steps you need to process images are all really obvious. So I converted all this stuff from Python into Perl not quite really know what I'm doing. So I, what it does now is I have a system that goes to their website, NASA, thank you very much, NASA, downloads a huge image, Python converted to Perl that turns it into a TIFF. I have image processing modules that now take this TIFF, colorize it, blend it, repair it somewhat, contrast. The thing you have to remember as well is astronomical images tend to be slightly different than the snaps you take on the beach or down beside that huge statue of the woman with the razor blade she's throwing down in the center of town, which is really cool. It's not quite the same as ordinary image processing, which is why there's all these. So I converted half a dozen Python programs into Perl. I've got my fetch and script. Crossed my fingers, put it all, ran it, and this was my first result. This was generated, so I spent maybe two hours converting these image modules. I'd already written the fetch, and I, very simple, everybody's written one of them. So two and a half work, two and a half hours work, three hours, it was one Saturday afternoon and it was raining and there's nobody else in the house and I was bored. This is what I produced. Now, come on, that's, I really like that, that's awesome, how cool is that? So I, I, I played around with this for an awful long time. I forked lots of processes, hit NASA servers, you do, there is a limit, because their servers are old and crusty and nobody knows about them. 
I did hit a limit, and, and my, my, my modules now cope with NASA not being able to respond to me. And it'll wait, and it'll retry, because I want my images, damn it. So I left this, and my Flickr stream, there's maybe 200 different targets that I don't, I got a bit carried away. And then I thought, oh, that's good. But then, you know, there's still, that's not good enough, really, is it? You know, once, once these things get into your head, there's other stuff that you could do. All I'm doing at the minute is taking one plate from a space satellite and turning it into an image. Yeah, whatever, you know, that's, that's what the Hubble people do. But no, I'm starting to think bigger. This is even better. Um, do you have, uh, I'm not, okay. I was, going to, I was going to give some sort of explanation of celestial geometry, but I, I cut that section out because while it's really interesting to me, I do find, and, and, and I, I will say, stellar astrophysicists are really good at parties, but just don't ask them certain questions or it will clear the dance floor type stuff. So what I did was I decided, well, I'll look on CPAN because I'm extra lazy. There must be some sort of celestial geometry code there, surely? No, please? There is, but it doesn't do what I do. I wanted it to do. What I wanted to do, I want to give it a coordinate. I wanted to move either side, three above it, three below it, get a huge mosaic. This is what I want now, because this is going to be extra cool. My definition of cool and yours might vary. But you know. So I, I'm, I'm going along, and I think, oh, this is great. So I wrote my own celestial geometry program. And I'm now going to add it to my list of things that every programmer should do as a rite of passage. They should write their own templating system, they should write their own ORM system, and they should write their own celestial geometry program. <laughs> um, so it's, I mean, if, oh, come on. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it, well, no, that was another 15 minutes in the end of it. Um, I, anybody has got, everybody these days does rectangular polar coordinates in school, at least they did when I was at school. Anyway, so now I've, I've got all this, and I thought, right, I'll do this. I'll naively put them together, and, oh, well, no, it, yeah, 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 it's um, something, something went slightly wrong, so I had to think about it, but, but even so, come on, come on, that was, that was pretty good as a first go. And I thought, right, the problem with that image, can I go back? The problem with this one is I blended and colorized them one at a time. And then you get, because the different color profiles, this is why they're different colors. So, yeah, okay, so let's, let's, I thought that's no good. I'll stitch them together, then apply my algorithms over them. So, okay, so each of these images is 6,000 pixels wide. And I've now got three of them, so yeah. And my poor little machine, I, I apologize for my carbon footprint while running this sort of stuff. So I tried again. This time I thought, right, I'll be extra clever. I'll try it. And I went, ah! And I went, oh, no, my celestial geometry's a bit off. It's not quite perfect. It's almost there. You can sort of see what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, and that, yes. Actually, the, the North American nebula, nebula at the minute is quite high in the sky from the UK. Your mileage may vary over here. It's a really nice sight. Really, really good. It doesn't quite look like that through my eyepiece, but, you know. So, yeah, so, okay, fine. Made a bit of a little mistake. So, yeah. Because everybody, I presume, still has their university and postgrad um, computational astrophysics textbooks at home. They do. I do, anyway. So I thought, right, go through some of those, fix some of my stuff, run the script again, and we're, still now, we're now running into late Saturday afternoon. So, so and this is what I get here. Now, now, come on. Is, is that not pretty cool? Look, seamless. Seamless, seamless blending. Of course, I've picked the images that work the best, but that's... Everything was on, okay. And again, I thought, right, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm still not, no, still not quite there, you know. I, I yeah, never, never can end these things, yeah. So, well, he, he, a hint: if you are doing these things, don't randomly poke about the sky. It just really doesn't work. So, this next image, actually, this next image uh, is on my Flickr stream with the one you're going to see here, and the one that I took with my own um, telescope a couple of nights ago. Bit of a difference, all the same. I don't have mine on there. So, yes, yeah, so this here, yep, ten and a half minutes. This, this image is three by three, uh, obviously scaled down. Um, it, on my, uh, my crumbly old MacBook, which this isn't, my daughter stole, so I've now got an even older, crumblier old Debian box. But on my Mac, it took ten minutes to get the fetch. Um, God bless Cambridge and their 150 meg broadband. <laughs> ten minutes to fetch, colorize, convert, put it all together, and then ping me and tell me, there's my image. And that's pretty, pretty cool. I, I, that impressed me, and I'm not easily impressed, because I'm Irish. So, <laughs> so I, in my longer talk, I would give a little bit about why this disproves the Big Bang, um, but you can come and see me about that later on. That's a special ARP galaxy, but yeah, hot, hot Big Bang cosmologists. 
But again, yeah, okay, here we go. What else can I do? I started thinking, oh, yeah, okay, everybody's come home by this time. I can't do any more work. But, um, yeah, even so, for an afternoon's work, I mean, come on, look. That's, um, you can't see that from my house, which is why I picked that one that's done this way. You'll be able to see it. I mean, come on, but seriously, though, yeah? So I started to play about with configuration options, and you can do lots of different things. So Dena, which is one of the summer triangle stars, you can get in closer. The fact you can get in closer and further away will come in. I'll explain more to you about this in a minute. So what I recommend, I, I will put all this stuff on CPAN soon. <laughs> it's, given it's a Saturday's afternoon hack, you can imagine the quality of the code. But um, I, I have to make it better for the astronomical code re repository people to have to do it. So what I, I recommend, yep, yeah, everybody's got star atlases at home, I presume. Um, I have more than enough of them. Pick your tar target, put the coordinates in, and away you go. Of course, that was all right. I'm all done for that one. Then I started thinking, you know, all these, all the kids today, they're all into this web browsing sort of nonsense thing. Don't like any of this. But, you know, I don't, I don't involve myself in any of that. But I thought, maybe I should. So, tell you what I'll do. Um, I quite like Dancer. I'm aware of it as a concept. Um, I don't like Moose. I'm aware of it as a concept. I just find it ugly. I decided I'll use all the code that I've already written. I'll convert it to Dancer. I'll Mooseify it, or whatever the um, adjective for it is. And I'll make myself a little web app. Right, so here's my web app. <laughs> yeah, you see, I learned things from NASA. <laughs> this is basically another front end to the NASA one, and it's equally as pretty, I think you'll find. And I also think you'll find it looks cunningly like the Dancer 2 tutorial. But that, that's <laughs> ignore, ignore all that. So now what we've got, yeah, you put in your um, right ascension declination, which is your that way and that way, and away it'll go. It goes, what this one does is it goes to NASA, it gets a 750 by 750 pixel preview, so it can show you on the screen. Ta-da, there we go. That's what it gets you really quickly, because 750 by 750 is really quick. While it's doing that and showing you, this is what you can see, it's also getting the 6,000 by 6,000 image to download so you can take it and play with it yourself. It's also getting the frame here, 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 all around it, because eventually I'm going to have a little panning thing here so you can move around. So you want to slew your telescope? Look at that. All a cheat, all a cheat. Now, do we have time? How am I going? Oh, oh, come and see me later on. It, it, I've, I've tried it on the Wi-Fi in here, and it works fine. D there's no problem. OK, so yes. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'll, I'll run it locally on my machine. I'll not give you where it lives on my server. <laughs> so it, I do have it running on my server, and it's really cool, and I'm just trying to iron bugs out of it. And I will release all the code, and then go and build your own internet telescope. And if somebody does build their own internet telescope and has a better front end, feed it back to me, because I'm crayons aren't my particular thing. So this, I recommend everybody goes and sees the Astrophysics Source Code Library. <laughs> it's, it's worth a giggle. <laughs> there is... Fortran 77 stuff on there, um, and I started in Fortran 4, so there's holy wars going on about that. Um, I'm more a visual observer than uh, the CCD people, and I highly recommend this book. If you want to start any visual observing, get that book. It's really good. I bought it first about 20 years ago. Don't quite use it anymore, but if you're starting, it's really, really good. Okay, blah, blah, blah. There are licenses on some of the image. The Americans seem a bit more picky than the Europeans, and some of the satellites have different images or different... Um, licensing than other images. Um, it's one of the reasons I picked the DSS. It's pretty open. Use it. Use it for your own research. But even so, I've done all this. Yeah. After all that, this is still my favourite image. Why? I. This is one of the first ones I ever took with my camera myself. Humans are a bit weird that way. I find it. Yeah. You look at all the ooh ah stuff. Yeah. <laughs> with my own photons, I created that or something. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit of a cheat. <sighs> I've left quite a bit out, but anyway, so I have to say, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you to NASA, and I'm quite happy to take some questions. If you have any questions, I think, am I, I'm on time? Yep. We oh, have uh, time I'm sorry for a few questions. Trips. Yeah, I... Mm -hmm. How come you never mentioned PDL that was started by an astrophysicist? <laughs> and it also does fit. <laughs> that the issue. Um, yeah, I, it's one of the, a lot of this um, was particularly a learning curve for myself, and I... Physicists also are, don't really like listening to other people too much. <laughs> so 
Yeah, I'm aware of it. I, I probably could. There's lots of shortcuts I could have done. Uh, PDL, really? Seriously? I'm trying, I'm trying to be happy and upbeat on all this and not go, Ooh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I, I wanted to, I, if I had a thought about this more before I started, possibly. But it was a sitting on the sofa, coming, uh, listening, thinking over what I was talking about in the pub the night before, and I went, oh yeah, what did he say about that NASA telescope thing? Oh, okay. It was more that. So. <laughs> All good fun. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> yes. Is it possible to like combine multiple satellite images? Of oh, the yes. Same thing oh, yes. Um, uh, I, I could, uh, <laughs> yes. Be careful is the <laughs> answer to that. Some of them have different resolutions. And I didn't know what some of the satellites were. And the Near Earth Asteroid Impact Observer doesn't really go well over the top of deep sky images. Just, just say that. What I, ha what I recommend is um, you try the gamma and infrared satellites on top of it. Another aside, everybody seen the Hubble images? Um, that's not what you would see if you went there. Uh, Hubble used something called the Hubble Pallet. The engineers at Hubble decided this is what they thought this wavelength would like, look like and stuff like that. So all the Hubble images use the Hubble palette. And because the Hubble was so successful, most other people use the Hubble palette. You don't have to. Some of mine don't, and the Monoceros one doesn't. So yeah, the gamma stuff's really good because it makes it look all freaky, and I have to say. So you can do, but it's generally best as well. Oh, the other thing I glossed over, the DSS only gives you images in red and blue. Now, RGB has another color in there. <laughs> Tip for cheating, green is actually blue. Treat your blue channel as your green channel, just if you're doing this by hand. And that, that, that actually works. That's why they only do it um, in red and blue. They don't do the green, because then you just cheat and pretend blue is green. We have time for one more, for one more question. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me later if you want. <laughs> um, I'm actually more interested in meteorological stuff. Can you flip this around and actually point it at the Earth? and use the satellites that watch weather systems and do the same thing to it? I'm unaware if they produce feeds. I'd be very surprised if they didn't. There must be some of them. They do. They're usually time delayed by at least half an hour, but aside from that. That's too late. It was wet by that point, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yes. I don't see why not. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and again, I'll be sitting on the sofa next Saturday afternoon going, Ah, weather satellites, eh? <laughs> but that's dull. That's terrestrial stuff. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm I'm a bit further out than that. Okay. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, we are moving on after a ten-minute break. I took that photograph as well. That's that's, a, that's with.